Hello, wonderful boys and girls, and welcome to Storytime with Avant Garde Books. I hope that you are well. Today, I will be reading Trees for Peace, the story of Wangari Matai. This book was written by Felicia Carmelita Hardy and illustrated by Suzanne Horitz in 2018. If you have a copy, feel free to read along, but if you don't, it's quite okay. Just get in a very comfortable place, get relaxed, and listen to Trees for Peace, the story of Wangar Matai. We cannot tire or give up. We owe it to the present and the future generations of all species to rise up and walk. Wangari Matai. I dedicate this book to women who work tirelessly to uplift and empower others and help make our world better. Felicia Carmelita Hardy. Wangar Matai knew the importance of trees, and they became a part of the rich legacy she left to our world. Trees are vital as the biggest plants on the planet. They give us oxygen, store carbon, stabilize the soil, and preserve the world's wildlife. They also provide us with the materials for tools and shelter. Wangari Mutamatai was born in Nyeri, Kenya in 1940. She grew up in the small village of Ehite. In 1964, Wangar Matai earned a degree in biological sciences from Mount St. Scholastica College. She also earned a Master of Science degree from the University of Pittsburgh in 1966 and obtained a PhD in 1971 from the University of Nairobi, an institution where she also taught veterinary anatomy. When Garmatai achieved unprecedented success in academia, she was the first woman in East and Central Africa to earn a doctorate degree, to become an associate professor, and to become chair of the Department of Veterinary Anatomy. While serving on the National Council of Women in Kenya, Wangar Matai became concerned that rural Kenyans did not have enough firewood, a secure food supply, and aid in decreasing soil erosion. In 1977, she decided to become an agent of change and empower people by creating the Green Belt Movement. This organization is responsible for planting more than 30 million trees in Kenya. It has given over 30,000 women new job skills and opportunities. The Green Belt Movement has also been responsible for solving the problem of deforestation. Wangar Matai was brutally beaten and arrested many times because she courageously spoke out against how her go country's government officials were mishandling the land and mistreating people. A place in Nairobi, Kenya's capital, where Matai protested called Uhuru Park became known as Freedom Corner.
Matai was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. She became the first African woman as well as the first environmentalist to win this distinguished award. The Norwegian Nobel Committee said that Wangara Matai stands at the front of the fight to promote ecologically viable social, economic, and cultural development in Kenya and Africa. She has taken a holistic approach to sustainable development that embraces democracy, human rights, and women's rights in particular. She thinks globally and acts locally. Wangar Matai was a member of many organizations that involved advocating for equal rights for women and environmental reform. She was given many awards and received 15 honorary degrees during her lifetime. Wangar Matai died on September 25, 2011, but courageous leaders and trailblazers like her should not be forgotten. They are powerful role models who inspire us to live and lead more productive lives that involve helping disadvantaged people. Thank you, Wangar Matai, for your contribution to Earth. Wangar Matai wrote three books during her lifetime. In 2003, she wrote The Green Belt Movement, Sharing the Approach and the Experience. Her memoir, Unbowed, a memoir, came out in 2007. And Replenishing the Earth, Spiritual Values for Healing Ourselves and the World came out in 2010. Thank you for watching our video. To get a copy of this book, you can go to avantgardebooks.net. We appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe to our educational channel. Have a wonderful day.